Hi, in this video, I'm going to take a look at the Joule Thomson and the Joule effect and the experiments that they did. So it was the year 1843 when Joule did, did an experiment where he was interested in knowing how the temperature of the gas changes. Suppose we change the volume of the gas of the uh, a container in which it is enclosed in. So it was the year 1843 and it's quite old. It's 175 years almost. So yeah, it's, but still it's, it holds a lot of significance. Suppose we talk about the Joule Thomson effect. So it has a lot of uh, significance in the refrigeration systems uh, because suppose we suppose we have the compressor over here and this is the uh, evaporator this is the condenser and uh, what we have here is this is a throttling device so when the refrigerant uh, passes through this throttling device there is a sudden decrease in uh, pressure which is accompanied by a sudden decrease decrease in temperature too so this uh, eva this uh, evaporator right here this represents the inside of a refrigerator uh, that is where you keep the food and all the stuff which is to be cooled down so it takes the heat from it all right and it again heats up and then it goes through the other parts of the refrigeration cycle so but this part right here where it throttles uh, this is actually a joule thomson effect all right so this is a very very important concept and uh, you should understand it with full dedication <laughs> what else can i say all right so let's start it so Jules was interested in knowing this temperature change how it changes with the, the change in volume all right so this was the kind of experiment set experimental setup that Joule performed and unfortunately it had some drawbacks that it had some leakages if the heat leakages because of which he was not uh, getting accurate results but uh, after after around 10 years he paired up with Thompson and uh, he started getting some really appreciable results. So we are going to take a look at this uh, ideal part. Uh, ideal in the sense that uh, we have this uh, adiabatic jacket uh, which doesn't allow heat to transfer from surrounding to system or from system to surrounding. All right. So what we do is uh, the, uh, this a container contains the gas and B container is vacuum it doesn't contain any gas it's completely empty all right uh, and we what we do do is uh, remove this valve from here so that gas can travel from A to B all right I can apply the first law over here and write delta Q as delta U plus W uh, uh, minded that uh, I'm writing this is work done by the gas so sorry for going against the physical chemistry norms but I just love physics too <laughs> so, anyways so of course this uh, heat transfer is zero because there is no heat transfer between this uh, surroundings and the system so this part is zero uh, let's talk about the work done by the gas all right so uh, although this process of the gas molecules moving from A to B is irreversible, why is it irreversible? Because there is a finite uh, pressure difference and uh, we are not able to calculate uh, PVT or the, we, are, we, have, we don't have the defined states at different times. So if we have this uh, PVT diagram and we have A and B points, where A is the initial point uh, when the gas is completely inside uh, A and B is the points, uh, so let's name it uh, X and X is the point uh, uh, when, all, when the gas is uh, in the equilibrium and it's distributed all over uh, and it is in the B also. So we don't have data points for the path that the gas follows from A to X and hence this uh, process is irreversible but we can still apply the uh, first law the problem would be that we won't be able to calculate work done by the gas because this work done by the gas that's minus pdv uh, this comes into picture only for the reversible part now the thing is uh, we are fortunate enough to prove that work done by the gas is also zero that is because it is expanding against vacuum and vacuum 
does not apply any force on the gas to expand so so the gas when it expands from a to b it does not have to do any work as such all right you can also think of this in a way that uh, uh, this work done by the gas is on the on the surroundings and uh, there is no work interaction from uh, between the system and the surroundings so work done by the gas is also zero and the final result that we get the beautiful result that we get is delta u to be zero so this is in uh, the internal energy become is constant in this process all right it's pretty important result just keep in mind so what you was interested in was he was trying to calculate the how the volume how the temperature changes as we change the volume i'm going to use do here because u t and v are related to each other all right so he was interested in finding this and uh, this thing this uh, coefficient this uh, ratio is defined as mu j and this is the joule coefficient all right now uh, the important point here to note is that joule, joule uh, coefficient was calculated calculated experimentally right so suppose i have a thermometer attached over here and uh, so i can know the temperature over uh, of the gas right how it changes so i have uh, the temperature i can also calculate the pressure suppose i put different uh, pressure meters or barometers at different points uh, i think the barometer is going to sorry if, if it's wrong uh, i can keep it at different points and see the pressure uh, all right so i have pvts and different at uh, different instants but still it's irreversible so anyways the point is that we have uh, mu j defined as this uh, let's come back to this the thing that we saw earlier we saw that cp minus cv is defined as del u by del v at constant temperature plus pressure into del v by del t at constant pressure right uh now this part right here suppose we know the equation of state the us of the that the gas follows so we know this term right it's pretty easy to calculate uh we know the pressure also the gas that del do u by do v at constant temperature we saw that th that this part is zero for this uh, ideal gases because suppose you increase the volume of the container since there are no interactions between the molecules so there won't be any change in the internal energy of the gas right so this was this was zero in the case of ideal gases but uh, in the case of uh, real gases this is not zero right so uh, can you uh, can you relate these two just you can relate relate these two things right uh, how can we relate these two things so we have u as a function of temperature and volume and uh, it's pretty easy to we know the relation between u t and v uh, we can use this uh, sort of uh, memorizing a shortcut and we know that uh, suppose i take do t over do u at constant volume into do u over do v at constant temperature into do v over do t at constant uh, u this is equal to minus 1 this relation is quite easy uh, what you do is uh, take a take u as a function of t and v and write the equation for the change in the differential change in u and uh, keep the du as zero and uh, what you get is this relation all right so uh, what i'm interested in is uh, of course this part right do u over do v at constant temperature so i'm interested in this part do t over do v all right this is nothing but uh, the reciprocal of this part so all right and if you look closely and if you look closely uh, this part is the reciprocal of uh, one over cv all right so we know first and the second part and we are oh sorry we know the first and third part we are interested in calculating the the second part so finally what relation we have uh, this is do u over do v at constant temperature is nothing but minus cv into mu j right 
So it's a pretty important relation. So mu j can be, can be calculated experimentally, right? CV we go we know for the gas, and experimentally also we can calculate CV. All right. Uh, so we now know dou u over dou v at constant temperature. So this is an important parameter that we now know. So this important parameter that uh, we have been uh, able to calculate using the Joule Joule experiment. All right. 